Hey there, it's Emil. In the last video I looked at the merits of using Capture One Pro. Right now I'm going to go into the actual workspace and getting around Capture One itself and some of the things that you can actually consider in terms of how you're going to organize your files when you're working with it. One of the advantages that I already mentioned in the previous video was that it doesn't work always in a catalog feature. Of course you can use catalogs in much the same way that Lightroom works, but the strength of Capture One for most users is its sessions. Now, if I jump through to my um, desktop over here, you will see that I have a Capture One view uh, working space uh, visible here, and this is a generic session that I've basically created. Now, you can create generic sessions which allow you to access any folders inside your hard drive if you want to. So for instance, this is the default workspace that we have over here, and on the left-hand side, you can see I have library. Now, inside my library, you can actually see I have all my system folders available. Inside the system folders is essentially all of your raw files. So, you don't have to import files into Capture One in order to be able to work them. You can literally just access the files that are already on your computer or inside your hard drives and start working straight away. The actual Capture One um, some of the metadata is then going to be stored in a sort of micro catalog, which is called a, a co-session basically, or a co-session database. So, looking at the workspace itself, it should be fairly familiar from most of the kind of programs that one uh, photographer is used to. So we have our grid view here, which is essentially our stage, and then on the left hand side we have got all of our, our files and our filters, etc, etc. If you are coming from a Lightroom um, workspace or a Lightroom base, you might find it easier to change the workspace. And this is one of the nice things around Capture One is that everything is infinitely customizable. So for instance, if you go through to your window at the top and then go down into workspace, you'll see you have several options over here. So for instance, this is the current default workspace, which I'm happy with, but you can also get simplified, which is going to change the workspace ever so slightly, and you'll see that it looks fairly similar to um, the default. If you are, let me click on an image so you can see how it comes up in the stage, and if you are coming from a Lightroom background, obviously you could go to Migration, which is going to look very similar to the actual um, uh, the workspace you would have been familiar with in Lightroom. So you have your film strip at the bottom, you've got your stage at the top, and on the right hand side you would have your various modes that you're going to be working in. I'm going to head back to Simplified, or the default one. So we'll go Window, and we're going to go Workspace, and I'll say Simplified, which is fairly simple. Now, the other advantage, of course, is that all of these docks on the left-hand side, you can actually unclick them, and you can move them about. So if I can have my filters as a separate floating dock, or I can add them into my panels on the left and the right-hand side. One of the critical things around Capture One is the ability to change some of the keyboard shortcuts, and I think this is an important thing to mention now, right at the beginning, because if you are migrating from a different software suite, you might already be familiar with a certain subset of keyboard shortcuts. So I personally like using certain keyboard shortcuts, which historically I've used for a very long period of time. So the easiest way to change this is to go into Edit, Edit sh Keyboard Shortcuts, and up pops a little panel over here, and you'll see all of the controls that are available in Capture One can be customized into the keyboard shortcuts that you choose. So for instance, I personally have set in my library the key strokes one through to five for the star ratings, which is exactly what you would have had in Lightroom. Six through to nine are going to be um, color rankings. And importantly, I have X. So for instance, if I go here and I say search key and I'm going to hit X, you'll see that I have X set to the color tag red. I've used this particular, particular workflow since the very beginnings of catalog-based work for, um, editing, and red for me means flag is reject. Uh, and then obviously option X is no color rating, and I'll show you how I use that in a moment. But importantly, it means that I can choose which keywords or keyboard shortcuts I want to apply to various um, uh, tools that are available. So for instance, I personally like G as gradient tool. So in other words, a gradient filter, which I'll be using in the develop section. 
I use a astrathan kind of symbol for my grid view simply because that's what Capture One used to use way back when, when it started out as Capture One, the original. Okay, at any rate, uh, let's go from there and you can now see on the left hand side you've got your session folders. This is the ordinary way of organizing your, your imports and then you have um, various system folders underneath as I mentioned and because you're using a co-session database you can still also add favorites and albums which are essentially virtual databases in exactly the same way that a catalog would work inside Lightroom. The difference being that you have this all inside a session workflow and the advantage of that means that you can transport these across from computer to computer more readily. You don't necessarily need to create a separate session for every time you open, uh, start the sh uh, shoot and you also don't have massive databases that you're having to deal with. Over here I have got a card from a previous workshop that I ran up in Finnmark in Norway and I'm going to close this generic session over here and I'm going to create a new session now simply by importing the files so that we can look at the basic workflow for getting your files into um, Capture One if you're going to use it as an ingest tool. So I'm going to go and plug the card in and I'm going to create a new session. So we're going to say new session. This time I'm going to, I'll call it Finmark. How's that? Because that's exactly where I was, Finmark. And I can then place where I want to put it. So I'm going to put it inside my raw folder. So I'm going to go into my hard drives and I'm going to put it into my raw folder and I'm going to say choose and then it's going to give me my Finmark. In fact, I'll call it Finmark test because right and now there we go. There is my um, my new session and it obviously doesn't have any photographs inside it at the moment. So you can see if I look at my um, folder view here, there is nothing inside the capture folder. I'm actually going to change my um, window through to the default because I see that the simple is just way too simple. So I'm going to go workspace and I'm going to say default. There we go. And you will now have all the other functions on the left hand side which we'll go through momentarily. But first I'm going to import some photographs. Capture One picks up the fact that I've popped in a card automatically and up comes its import dialog which again should look fairly simple, similar to anybody who's used any other kind of editing software in the past. So here we've got all our thumbnails where you can see everything. Uh, we can include subfolders, we can exclude du duplicates if we want to. Um, so if I've imported these photographs already and my, I've used Capture in the past, it will recognize that I've already used, put these photographs inside. Okay, so uh, it's going to go automatically through to the Capture folder of the session that I have just created. And um, Right, that's it. We can put it into a subfolder if we want to, but we're going to just keep it inside the capture folder for the time being. Right, like Lightroom and Photo Mechanic and Bridge and every other ingest tool out there, you can back up if you want to and send it through to a separate hard drive immediately. If we would like to, you can also start by changing the names as you bring this in. So just for the time being, let's quickly create a new naming convention here. So you've got all these tags that you can basically choose from. So I'm going to go and find the um, shoot day itself. So we'll go through to uh, image date and just add that. So I'm gonna double click on that and that'll be inside the name. I'll put a hyphen inside there. Uh, we can put in the location potentially. Um, let's do image. Hmm. Actually, let me just put in a sequence for the time being because I haven't, I haven't added all of that information yet into the metadata. So we just need to have a sequence over here. So I'll go down and I'll find my sequence count. There we go. And that's it. And then we'll say OK. So now we've got essentially a, a new filing structure as the photos come inside and it'll be the image date and the sequence. Nice and easy. OK. Copyright, you can add your copyright information there if you would like to, uh, as well as other metadata if you would like as well. All right, and then I'm just going to say include easy adjust, uh, existing adjustments. There aren't any, so it doesn't make any difference. If you wanted to, you can actually create presets. So exactly like other Pyware um, editors like Lightroom, you can have presets and you can even purchase some from Capture One if you want to. Personally, I just build my own if I want to. I have metadata presets as well. So for instance, I can say email copyright, which is a particular metadata preset. I'll do more on those in a separate video. So let's just import those. So I'm gonna select all of my images. I'm gonna tag them like so, and we are going to 
hit import. Right, the ingest is going to start. At the moment it's fairly slow because it's importing some videos first, which of course you can't edit in Capture One, but you can still tag with metadata and you can view in um, Capture One as well. Apart from the videos though, Capture One is a fairly fast ingest um, engine. So I find it's useful, although to be entirely honest, I am still a photo mechanic fan. So I don't always use Capture One for my ingest, but I do use it for my initial editing of raw files. Capture One is obviously importing the photographs into my hard drive at the moment and adding them to the session. If I look at my workspace at the moment, let's quickly go over that, you'll see on the left hand side I have my panels and obviously I've still got my system folders available, but all of the images that I am working on at the moment are going to automatically be inside the capture folder. Above that you'll see various tools, so I'm going to run through those so that you understand what they are. First is obviously going to be my library view and of my filtering point of view. The second button is a little camera and this is your tethering workspace. Tethering is brilliant, I will uh, deal with that in a future video, but it's one of the reasons why a lot of commercial photographers stick with Capture One, because the tethering experience is one of the best available. The next is your optics button. Now this is going to be similar to the optics in Capture One or, uh, sorry, in uh, Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, so you'll be able to click on an image and you will actually see all of the settings and you can change your chromatic aberration, etc, etc. We'll deal with this later. The color workspace is a separate workspace and is one of, again one of the reasons why um, Capture One users love it. Then you have your develop section which is all the basics, so essentially your exposure, your dynamic range, clarity, um, saturation, again we'll deal with that later. Sharpness which is for sharpening, to, sharpening your images, getting rid of noise, um, adding film grain, the moiré, that kind of stuff. Then you have a styles and presets tab which is um, this allows you to copy adjustments and paste adjustments and so on and then finally you've got your metadata tab so metadata obviously allows you to add things like keywords you can ch change your um, copyright details you can add headlines you can also search for keywords at a later stage once you have a larger database that is the one downside to using sessions of course is that you can't search all of your images by uh, using a keyword search, but you can search within the data, the co-session database that you've created. We'll again come to this at a later stage, but for the most part this video is going to look at how I deal with my initial cull of my images. So on the left hand side you can see I am in the capture folder. What I would do is I would go through my images in the view section like so, so I'd go through my images and I will rank them. I'll rank and I will also remove any images that I'm going to cull. So for instance, if I do not like this particular photograph, I'm going to hit X and you'll see that a little red flag gets attached to the image itself. So I'll go through my images and I have a very basic ranking system. One star means it's okay, I'll keep it, but it's not, it's not an important image. Two stars, those are the images that I'm going to work on, they spend, I spend the bulk of my time working on them, I'm going to use them for Instagram, I'm going to send them to clients, I'm going to potentially publish them. Three star are the ones where I sit there going, wow, this is the best thing I've done since, I don't know, uh, graduation. It's my super hot photographs. Those are the ones that I know are going to win awards, those are the ones that um, I am going to spend an inordinate amount of time, amount of time working on. Now, going back to what Ansel Adams wrote in his book, The Camera, you only expect to get 12 three stars a year if you're lucky, and that's pushing it. So don't expect a whole bunch of three stars from one, one shoot. I personally don't go for the four and the five stars, because what's the difference between two stars and three stars and then four stars and five stars? I just like a nice simple system of one, two, and three. The images that don't get ranked are ones that I just, uh, I'll come back to maybe if I ever have time, but if I lose them, I couldn't care less. Going through the images, I will, for instance, that's reasonable, one star, now I'll get rid of that one, and we would go through them in such a manner, basically ranking them as we go. Right, so that's an X, that's an X. Okay, these are obviously all images, ah, and here comes the interesting ones. Right, so this is a two star, probably also a two star, no, wait, one star. And I will just go through very quickly, working out whether I want to keep images or not keep them. Okay, so...
Okay, so I've very quickly gone through my photographs and I've uh, ranked and I've colored starred my or color flagged the images that I'm going to delete. And this is where the filters tab now comes in play. So essentially, rather than deleting an image individually, which obviously means it's going to trigger a, are you sure you want to do this message? I can now go into my filters and I'm just going to click on the red. And this is all of the images that I'm going to delete. So I'll select all of those and I'll hit command and backspace for deleting them. And this means that the images are deleted, but they're not gone forever. You do still have a backup, and that's where you'd go through to the trash folder. So the trash folder is still kept within the session sort of ecosphere. So now you've got all of your deleted images there, and you can check them again if you're paranoid and you're worried about it, or if you've made a mistake. So now you can just simply look at them again quickly, confirm that you need to delete them, right click on your trash folder, and empty session trash. This now deletes them from the disk. They don't go to the trash folder inside your Mac uh, Pro or inside your computer or wherever. It's now gone. They're deleted. So we're going to jump back to our capture folder. Now you'll see it says no results found for the current filters. Like with Lightroom, your filters are on off switches. They don't automatically unswitch. So you'd have to unswitch it to see all of your photographs. But because I've ranked my images, I can actually click on them as well. So you can see I've got one, two, and even a three star over there. So if I click on my two stars, you'll see there are the images that I feel I'm going to be spending some time working on. If I look at my three star, I think that one has potential. So I'm potentially going to be working on that a little bit more. Right. If I want to see multiple types of tags, all I need to do is hold down my command button and then click on another one of those little switches and then you'll be able to get through your images. Okay, so it's a fairly robust way of viewing through your images quickly and being able to um, identify them. Just to finish up off on our workspace over here, obviously you can look at your files bigger or smaller. You can double click on them to get inside to the, inside the image. You can go back to your grid view. You can, so for instance, here's a two star that I quite liked. If I want to, I can zoom in to 100% by hitting Alt, Command, um, and Zero, or Option, Command, Zero. And I can go out by hitting Command, Zero. Again, these are keywords that you can, or keyboard shortcuts that you can change if you want to. You can make them your own. Um, you can also obviously look through the various other types of um, uh, sort of metadata in order to find your images. So I could say that I only want to see my horizontal images. So I can click on landscape and then all of the landscape images are going to pop up. Or I can say I want only the portraits. Or I can say which lenses you've been using. So I only use two lenses on that particular day. Uh, my, uh, actually it looks like, yeah, I only used one, from my 16 to 35, it seems. Um, so they are very, it's a very robust way of viewing your images if you want to. Um, we'll get back into more of the tools available in Capture One as we go in through the develop sections and stuff, but that's basically it. You can get your images into your computer and you can access them immediately using Capture One, unlike using other lightware or uh, Pyware tools. You can think of Capture One more as a really advanced version of Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge allows you to see your raw files from the word go without importing anything, but you have to then open them in Adobe Camera Raw or Photoshop in order to play with the images. Capture One is the best of Bridge as well as the best of Lightroom squeezed into one so that you've got immediate access to your images. You can still sort through, you can still cull, you can still rename. Um, and then you've got your full editing suite with layers, which is what we will come back to in the following video. Cheers for now. Oh, uh, if you enjoyed this, pop a like. Remember to subscribe to the uh, channel if you'd like to know some more about this. Capture One is one of the work, uh, or one of the software suites that I'm familiar with and that I enjoy using. Um, I will be doing more of these in future, obviously. So hopefully I will see you in the next one. Cheers.